everybody so <laughs> oh good morning um in my last video i showed you uh an absolute downpour a complete deluge um so it's been unseasonably wet here in rwanda um for you know a few months and you'd think that with all that water coming out of the sky that uh you'd have no problems taking a shower or um you know with the water coming out of the taps um but we have huge problems so it's now it's day two without water um and you know i live in an area in kachiru which is usually very very good for water electricity internet uh, it's quite close to what we call Embassy Row, which is where a lot of the, uh, the em well, obviously the embassies um, and, you know, uh, ambassadors live. So, you know, security, water amenities are usually pretty good. Um, but the problem that we have is, so during the long dry season, so in Rwanda, we have a long and a short dry season and a long and a short wet season. Um, and during the long dry season you can go for three months without any rain at all so obviously you know you have a few water shortages during that but then when the rain comes it comes so hard that it basically um all the silt runs down and blocks the pipes and then you don't have much water actually uh coming out of your taps which is currently the situation we've got at the moment it's been raining really heavily the past few days and i think just nothing's coming out of the water tap now last year at the beginning of last year i was talking to my landlord i was talking about maybe getting a water tank installed because a water tank solves this problem it basically fills up and then there's extra water there when you want to use it um but <laughs> uh i I, I didn't because he said that actually they're renovating a lot of the city water tanks around this area and that that should actually stop the problem. But that doesn't seem to have happened. Um, so I do have an emergency bucket. Uh, I always keep a, a full emergency bucket of water. Um, but it does mean that, you know, when there isn't water coming out of your taps, you really can serve it. So I put the emergency water into my uh, drinking water. Uh, filter so that I've always got drinking water and you know I'll occasionally use it to wash with but I won't wash the dishes and I won't wash the laundry until the water comes back out of the tap because you don't know how long you're going to be without water. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to take a bucket bath um, and it might seem like a bit of a strange uh, topic for a video, a um, little bit of an intimate one, <laughs> but it's necessary. I mean, if you are moving to a region or a country where maybe water isn't as forthcoming as it would be elsewhere, um, and you do face water shortages, then you are going to need to know how to do this. Um, and it's something, I guess, that everybody learns in their own ways i mean you might think it's very straightforward to wash yourself in a bucket it is but there are a couple of little things that can help to make it um slightly more um <laughs> slightly more i wouldn't exactly say pleasant but slightly easier and slightly more economic in terms of the water use so my dear friend antonia actually taught me this about 15 years ago when i first moved here um, as a volunteer, I was with VSO, so, you know, we were living in, um, you know, very local conditions. Um, so anyway, that's something that I had to learn. And this is how she taught me and how I take my bucket baths today. So the first thing you're going to want to get is a towel so that you have something comfortable to kneel on. You'll also want your wash kit. And some water from your emergency supply. So the first thing we're going to do, whilst the water is at its cleanest, is to wash our face. Always use the cleanest water on your face because you have sensitive areas such as your eyes and mouth. If you're creating suds with soap or shampoo, try and keep the suds out of the bowl as much as possible so the water remains clean.
After your face has been cleaned, move on to your hair. Shampoo first, again trying to keep the suds out of the bowl until we're ready to rinse. After shampoo, we're moving on to conditioner if you use it. Once your hair's done, it's time to handle everything else. Soap yourself down, shave whatever needs to be shaved, then rinse it all off, working from your shoulders downwards. The very last part you clean is your privates, and it's usually easier to crouch over the bucket to rinse. You would normally be naked for this, obviously. By this point, the water is going to be pretty rank. But never fear, there is a use for this. You can pop it in the toilet system or pour it directly into the bowl next time you need to flush. There's a useful saying to help you conserve water. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. So what I just showed you was how I used to bucket bathe until recently. But if like me, you're getting on a bit and don't fancy kneeling for long periods, then you can also wash standing up. And it's quite nice washing outside on a sunny day. For this version, it helps to have a jug. As before, start with your face. Move on to your hair. Try to avoid soaping up the water too much. Rinse. Brush. Wrap. Soap. And that's a wrap. One thing you do need to be mindful of if you live with water shortages is to maintain the hygiene of your emergency water supply. Every couple of months I'll empty out the remains of the bucket, give it a really good scrub down with disinfectant and refill it.
If you don't do this, the barrel can get a bit sludgy. So I hope you don't need to bucket bath too often, but if this has been helpful, please give it a like and subscribe.